So print out or take a look at the cheat sheet that I've put in the notes for this video and let's go through the copyrighted by IB data booklet to try and answer some functional group questions. Looking at these three vitamins and vitamins, what are the common functional groups there? Well I see OH, OH and OH. Now don't be tempted to say that the functional group is an alcohol, the class is an alcohol. The functional group for OH is hydroxyl. Any other functional groups? Well, I can see a carbon-carbon double bond, carbon-carbon double bond, and a carbon-carbon double bond there. And these are alkenols. Don't be tempted to say alkenes. Alkenes is the class. We're looking for the functional groups. OK, take a look at these four chemicals here, these four pigments, and see if you can find two esters, two keto, otherwise known as oxo groups, and two carboxyl groups. There are the esters. Keto, well that's three carbons in a row with a cheeky double bond in the middle to oxygen. Two of those. One here. Bugger, where's the other one? Ah and one there. And the carboxyl group, well, the class is carboxylic acid, but this functional group is the carboxyl group, and there's two of those. There's one, and there is the other. What's the green? The green is aldehyde. Class and functional group are both called aldehyde. And there's another alkenyl there. Some medical molecules. Uh, I've read that there's a one chance in three that you're alive because of penicillin, because either you or one of your ancestors took it and didn't die. So let's compare their structures. I can see here there and there, there are phenyl functional groups. There's a carboxylic acid. That's the class. You have to call it the carboxyl group. There's another carboxyl group on the penicillin. There's another one on ibuprofen, and notice how they're all the same, COOH, but they've been written slightly differently. But there appears to be no carboxyl group on the paracetamol. What else do we have? Let's look for esters. I can see one ester. Can you spot it? There it is. And that'll do for now. Let's scroll down to these three painkillers, morphine, codeine, and diamorphine. A question I like to ask is, what is the difference in the functional groups of these three? Well, the main difference is that the morphine has two hydroxyl groups. But when you're looking at codeine, one of these hydroxyl groups has been replaced by an ether carbon, oxygen, carbon. And moving on down to heroin, those groups have been replaced by ester linkages. YouTube took all the monetization off of my how to make heroin videos recently. Thanks. Onwards, let's look at these three chemicals here. What are the three common functional groups? Well, 
you can have alkyl. Everywhere's got alkyl groups. I can also see ethers. One there. One there. One there. And amines. And one unique functional group for each of those three. Well, nowhere has this sulfur bridge. That's not on the syllabus, but we'll go with that one. I think that this ester is unique. And for Zanamavir, I think I taught a kid with that name. We'll go with this carboxyl functional group. So I put those in cheekily at the end. This is a nitrile. And this, you might think that's an alkyne. Nope, that's the class. You need the functional group. Alkynal. Jeez. Alkynal. And we're done. I've been putting this video off for seven years. Wasn't so bad.